Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Tom's Gadget Garage. In today's video, I'm gonna be covering the Segway 9Bot app, specifically for the Segway 9Bot Max G2. Now, it's been about four to five months since I last did a video on this app, but since then, Segway has made some considerable changes to their user interface, as well as some of the menu options in the app. So today, we're gonna to be doing a deep dive into the app in its entirety. So, without further delay, let's jump into the details. All right, so the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is make sure that the scooter is connected via Bluetooth, which you can see by this green indicator here, it is. And then you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and power the scooter on. Once it's powered on at the top left, you're gonna see this 25 miles. It might be a little bit different for you because this number is the estimated range that you can go on your scooter given the current battery charge as well as the drive mode that you're in. So the Segway 9 by Max G2 has three drive modes. It's Eco Mode, Drive, and Sport. Uh, I am currently in Sport, so based on the battery charge of 100%, I could get upwards of 25 miles of range. If I were in Drive or Eco Mode, that number would be greater. Now, to the right here, you do have uh, your battery indicator, and as you can see, it's at 100%. If you go ahead and click on that 100%, it'll take you to some battery details. It'll tell you the milliamp hours of the battery, the voltage, uh, the temperature, and some other data points, as well as the battery firmware version that you have installed here at the bottom. If you click battery maintenance, it'll take you uh, to some tips uh, on how to maintain your battery. But I'm gonna go ahead and click the back uh, button here. And the next thing I wanna show you is the actual picture of the scooter itself. If you actually click on that picture, it'll take you to some uh, details about your specific scooter. You've got your serial number, total mileage, the current vehicle temperature in Celsius, as well as the firmware versions that you have. And you also have the ability to check for a firmware update. So I'll go ahead and click that now. Oh, and it's currently up to date. Uh, no updates available um, as of this moment. You can also go back into the battery details, which we saw uh, just a moment ago. Now, one thing that I'm really excited about is that they have added additional functionality to this page, specifically the dashboard. You actually have to uh, previously click into the scooter icon to access the dashboard. Now it's right here on the homepage. So if you click on dashboard, uh, the nice thing about this is it's gonna give you a real-time readout of uh, how fast you're going, the watts you're pulling, mileage that you've gone on this particular ride, um, estimated mileage remaining, battery charge, uh, the ride duration, how long you've been riding, the max speed that you've been able to attain on this ride, vehicle temperature, the current and amps, as well as the voltage. And a really nice thing about this is let's say you're going out, you know, on a 20-mile ride and you want to keep, you know, close tabs on the range that you're going. Well, the scooter itself doesn't have a range readout on the LCD, but here in the app, you do have that range readout. But let's say, for example, you're nine miles in and you're like, oh, wow, you know, I forgot to open up the app to get things started. No worries. It will have already tracked your entire trip from the moment that you powered on the scooter. So that's really a nice feature. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about uh, is the settings menu, um, which is also here on the home screen. In the past, you'd have to scroll all the way down and go to more functions uh, to get into there. Now uh, they've added a button right here on the home screen for settings. So if you click into that, it's going to take you to this page, which is all the customizable settings for the Segway 9Bot Max G2. Now, the first setting that we're gonna look at today is light effect. And that is essentially gonna be the behavior of the brake light when you pull uh, the brake lever. Now, by default, it's set uh, to make the light brighter uh, when you hit the brakes. Uh, I personally uh, prefer to use flash when braking because I'm all about being as visible as possible, especially given all the distracted uh, drivers nowadays. So that's the light effect. Uh, the next setting that we're going to look at is cruise mode, also known as cruise control. Now, this may or may not be available in your region. Uh, I am in the United States, uh, and so we do have cruise control uh, available here. By default, it is disabled, but you can actually enable it in two different ways. Uh, the first one here, which is selected, uh, is essentially by pressing and holding uh, the turn signal indicator uh, for more than three seconds while you're riding, and it will lock you into whatever speed you're going at the end of that three seconds. Uh, that's my preferred way to use cruise control. The other option uh, down here is to enable by holding the throttle for five seconds. So basically you hold the throttle in a set position at a set speed, 
and after five seconds, it will lock you into that speed. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and click back. So the next setting that we're gonna look at is energy recovery, also known as regenerative braking or your electric brake. Uh, when you click into this, you'll see that you have the option uh, to disable it, set it to weak, or set it to strong. Now, when they first released the Segway 9 Bot Max G2, uh, they had three options, weak, medium, and strong. After various firmware updates, they've done away with medium uh, and they've uh, added the ability to disable it. I set mine to weak, um, you know, and that might be different for you. So I definitely recommend testing this out in a safe, controlled area to see how that break uh, kicks in in both strong uh, and weak mode. If it's completely disabled, uh, if you release the throttle, you'll just cruise. So the way you activate the regenerative brake when it's enabled is by simply releasing the throttle or pulling on the brake lever. Uh, the next setting we're going to look at is walk mode. So let's say you're with a group of friends that are walking, you've got your scooter, um, and you want to basically maintain their pace. You can enable walk mode, which will set the maximum speed of the scooter to 3.1 miles an hour. So makes it a heck of a lot easier to ride at a slower pace compared to something like eco, drive, or sport mode. The next setting that we're going to look at is charging limit. Now, there is a note here that says that a lower charging limit will increase battery life. Um, if you're the kind of person uh, who you know, uses your scooter regularly and on all of your trips you're getting to near zero, yes, you're probably going to want to charge to 100% uh, often. For me, most of my trips are you know, relatively short unless I'm doing a range test or a hill climb test or something like that. So I generally keep this between 80 and 85%. But if I was gonna go do a hill climb test or a range test, I might uh, set this to 100% uh, and then charge it all the way up. But for me, I like to keep it at 85. Uh, another option that you have within the app is the start speed. Now, what is start speed? Keep in mind the Max G2 is a kick scooter. So in order to get going, you have to propel yourself with your foot to at least 1.8 miles an hour before that throttle and motor kick in. Now, if you're not interested in doing that, if you'd rather be able to use the throttle uh, from a dead stop, you can set that to zero or you can increase that threshold, whatever you prefer. Now, I will tell you right now, if you are riding on a relatively steep hill, it may be a little bit difficult uh, to use your foot to get yourself up to 1.8 miles an hour. So if you are going up a steep incline, uh, you might wanna try setting it to zero so that you can immediately take advantage of that throttle without having to kick yourself uphill. The next setting that I absolutely recommend is the direction uh, indicator sound here, which you can uh, toggle off and on. By default is off, uh, but I highly recommend turning it on. One thing that I've noticed is that when I turn my turn signals on, uh, I often forget that they're on because it doesn't make a sound. And so I'm cruising around going about, you know, my day and you know, this thing has been blinking, you know, for the last, you know, two and a half miles. So with the direction indicator sound, it's kind of like a car. You'll hear that it's going and you'll know immediately after your turn is done uh, to disable that. The next setting that you have available to here is the Imperial metric system. So if you need to set, you know, kilometers per hour, miles per hour, you have the ability to do that. Uh, and then the next big setting here is the custom settings of sport mode. So this may or may not be available to you in its full capacity, depending on where you live. Some countries have uh, very strict speed restrictions. Here in the US, um, we do have the ability to unlock this to the full speed, which is 22 miles an hour. So you'll wanna go about um, basically enabling this. Of course, it's off by default. Um, and when you do enable it, uh, it'll give you a little disclaimer here. I click yes, and then I'll actually be able to um, set the speed upwards of 22 miles an hour, or maybe if I don't want 22, maybe I want 15 or 14, 13. Great, you can do that too. I keep mine at 20. Um, I find that to be you know, a really comfortable speed to cruise around at. You can also adjust your acceleration settings. So if you want you know, more aggressive acceleration, you can set it to max speed, uh, or you can drop it down to normal or energy saving mode. Just know that it's gonna take you quite a bit more time to get up to speed. So if you're trying to keep up with traffic and stuff like that, um, normal and energy saving mode might not be ideal. You might wanna set it to max speed. And the next setting we're gonna look at is the locking function here. Uh, and so if you're gonna be 
uh, locking up your scooter outdoors, which, you know, if you can avoid it, I would because there's just crazy people out there stealing scooters and e-bikes and running around with like, um, you know, rotary saws and stuff like that. It's crazy. But if you do have to lock it up, you have some additional security that you can enable um, by enabling this lock function, which basically requires you uh, uh, to enter a, a passcode or unlock the scooter with the app in order to get, uh, get it going and be able to ride it. So if you want to be able to take advantage of that, you can do that. I personally am not locking up my scooter um, in public places very often, so this is not a feature uh, that I typically use, uh, but it is available to you. Uh, there is an abnormality alert, which will you know raise some alarms in case there's some kind of abnormal vibration detected in the scooter. Uh, and then the next section here is the Segway 9 Bot Lab, which will give you two additional functions that you can enable. One is traction control, which is awesome, right? So if you're gonna be riding uh, uh, on slick roads, wet roads, you know, potentially snowy, icy roads. I've seen some videos of people riding these things in the snow, it's crazy. This could potentially be a great feature for you. But just know this, a Segway does say uh, in their user documentation that the traction control system can impact uh, hill climb performance. And so if you're gonna be climbing, you know, steeper hills um, that aren't slippery, they're not wet, you don't really have to worry about traction, consider disabling this uh, because I definitely do. Uh, but if you are going to be going up hills and, you know, it's, you know, inclement weather, it's wet roads, icy roads, whatever the situation might be, that traction control system uh, could definitely be helpful in those conditions. Uh, the next option that you have is the find my functionality uh, with Apple iOS devices. And so you can actually go into here, you can turn find my on uh, and which will allow you to track your device from the convenience of your phone. So if you misplaced your scooter, you know, after a crazy night out or something, or somebody jacked your scooter, uh, you know, there's a high likelihood that using Find My, you'll be able to locate your scooter. Uh, how you go about recovering it is always an interesting uh, thing to think about, uh, but at least you'll know where it is. And of course, uh, here at the bottom, we've got uh, device info, which takes us back to that same screen that you would have gotten to if you clicked on the scooter icon on the home page. And then of course, at the bottom, you've got your unbind vehicle. Uh, so if you ever need to sell your vehicle, whatever, be sure to go through the unbinding process first. Otherwise, uh, the person you sell it to is not gonna be able to use it with their app because it's gonna say it's bound to somebody else's account. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and click the back button here. And as we scroll down the app, you'll see some tasks for beginners, you know, set passcode, you know, some about vehicle stuff. So if this is the first time you using the app with a scooter, it'd be interesting for you to go in and learn more about those things. Um, you've got some quick access general settings here. So, you know, you can go in and, you know, quickly access the cruise control mode. Uh, if you want to set energy recovery, you can adjust that here. And then, of course, you can quickly enable walk mode, which I won't. Uh, as we scroll down track records, this allows you to record your rides, you know, on a map within the app, which is really cool. I don't typically use that. I just use the regular dashboard um, view to monitor speed and all that fun stuff as I'm riding. Uh, you do have a vehicle odometer here. So I've got 426.5 miles on this scooter so far. This next section I am particularly excited about, uh, and this came with their most recent uh, app update on iOS which is 6.3.0, and it's this self-diagnosis manual. Now, this is really cool because it allows you to diagnose um, error codes that might pop up on your scooter. Now, full transparency, I've never had an error code pop up on my Max G2. Uh, I've owned this scooter uh, basically since the day it launched and they started uh, shipping these things out. And I ride this thing here in the Phoenix, Arizona area, and I was riding in the middle of the summer in some pretty brutal conditions. Uh, and I still didn't run into any overheating issues, but there were other riders that were experiencing overheating issues and some strange braking behavior and all that stuff. Uh, and Segway has since addressed many of those issues, but other error codes could pop up. And one thing I'll tell you is when I go online and look at a lot of resources, I see a lot of people you know, asking questions like, hey, I got error code 10 on my scooter. What does that mean? How do I fix it? Or, hey, you know, I got uh, error code 41. What does that mean? How do I fix it? Well, great news is that directly in the app, you have this new self-diagnosis manual. So you can click into error code here 
and it will give you a list of potential error codes that you can see on your Max G2. So for example, if you click error code 10, it'll tell you what the error details are, the solution to that particular problem, and some of these things actually have images uh, that help you in diagnosing and addressing the issue. So super helpful. Uh, another example here, uh, error code 41 is another overheating related uh, issue. You know, if the controller temperature um, goes beyond certain thresholds, you'll get this error code 41 flashing on your screen and it'll tell you about it and what you can do uh, to address it. So super helpful prior to this, like you'd have to go look at the user manual, which actually had just a handful of some of the most common error codes uh, that you might see on this uh, scooter. So having it, you know, at your fingertips within the app is huge. Um, there's also some additional information here, like if you have issues powering the scooter on or off or issues charging the battery. This is a common one here. So some people uh, have complained in the past, like, hey, I just went on a long ride. I got home, I threw it on the charger and it's not charging, like what's going on here? Well, if you click into this, it'll let you know that, hey, if your scooter temperature is above 45 degrees Celsius, it's not gonna charge. That's a battery safety function. And so you'll have to wait for your scooter to cool down a little bit. Uh, and so that answers a question right off the bat. You know, a lot of people thought their scooter was broken. No, you just gotta let it sit for a while, cool down, and then you can charge it up. That prevents damage to the battery and potentially, you know, dangerous situations. Uh, and so you have that available to you. And there's some other things in here that you can look at, um, you know, motor and tire. You know, if you have a tire leakage, what you can do, uh, you know, lighting related issues and all that fun stuff. So that self-diagnosis manual is available to you here. There's also a community QA. Uh, so if you're interested to see, you know, what other people are posting, questions they have, issues they're running into, you can go in uh, to the Segway community and go view that. And then of course you've got some other functionality in here. For example, the user manual for a wide variety of electric scooters because you can use this app for multiple uh, Segway devices. Um, you've also got uh, some after sale service uh, information here, uh, repair centers where you can purchase, you know, spare parts and all that fun stuff uh, directly within the app. And finally here at the bottom uh, of the experience, you have a button to go to more functions, which takes you to the exact same place as this settings button here. So, you know, in previous versions of this app, you didn't have dashboard or settings on this homepage. You had to do multiple clicks to get into that stuff. So definitely a better experience. So thank you Segway for simplifying this. And you know, after going through all of these, I do have to commend Segway on creating app enabled scooters. Cause I'll tell you what, you're able to go on here and customize your experience. And you know, if people are having issues with the scooter, like early on when people were having overheating issues, uh, some braking issues when going downhill at high speed, Segway was able to address those with over the air firmware updates. They're also able to use uh, that connectivity to add additional features and functionality. And I'll tell you what, there's a lot of scooters out there that don't have app integration. So when you buy a scooter that isn't app enabled, what you buy is basically what you get and it's not going to change. Uh, with Segway, the experience is continually evolving. And what I found about them is that they are very responsive to customer feedback, which isn't often something that you see with a lot of scooter companies out there. So I hope all this content was helpful for you. Let me know in the comments what your favorite settings are, settings that uh, you know, you'd like to see in the future. And as always, thank you so much for tuning into Tom's Gadget Garage. We'll see you next time.